Thanks everyone for joining us on our webinar today. Uh, what we're going to be showing is the new features that have been added to SIN2 in the autumn 2020 timeframe. So roughly uh, September 2020 till today. Um, as a reminder, this webinar will be recorded for future use. So we will post it to our website as well as our YouTube channel. Also, if you have any questions, please go to your uh, Zoom window and under the Q&A, uh, just type in your questions there and we will give you an answer and we'll try to summarize some of those at the end of the webinar. So from here, I would like to turn it over to Dominique Pulkin, who will kind of walk us through our webinar today. Uh, thanks, Rob. Um, so just the first um, uh, message here, this, uh, the, this webinar will be mostly about advanced features that we introduce in the platform. If you are very new to Sintu Cloud, I really recommend that you first go through a few other uh, uh, recordings uh, that you first watch, for example, this uh, a webinar that we did about a year ago that will introduce all the core features of the platform, how you upload data, download data, view, uh, measure, annotate, uh, invite users, things like that. So on, uh, if you want to know more about how people use a platform, I recommend this, uh, watching this order uh, webinar that was recorded in September, uh, giving uh, the voice to, uh, to giving, uh, so uh, letting uh, users tell us uh, how they use a platform uh, in uh, uh, construction on engineering uh, use cases. Having said that, this is the agenda for today. So uh, we will go a few uh, through a series of uh, uh, demos of new features, uh, talking about other stuff like uh, cybersecurity. Uh, mostly those new features are about uh, giving you more flexibility, more possibilities to navigate your scans in the platform. Uh, but you will see that. So we will have a, a series of demos here, uh, but also how we connect to BIM 360 for issues and things like that. And we will spend some time showing you what's coming in the next few weeks. Uh, particularly uh, the upload of uh, mobile uh, indoor data, like the Navis uh, VLX or the Leica VLK to go. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, how you can also upload 360 degree images. So finally, I would say, uh, c Cloud is becoming a multimodal platform. This is great. And also some other interesting stuff like uh, uh, using uh, this uh, high-res mesh-based scanned data into uh, Unreal or Unity. And we'll finish by this Q&A session. So let me start by the first, uh, the first item. Uh, oh, before that, sorry. Uh, before that, just a quick intro. Uh, I'm Dominic uh, Poliquin uh, in charge of uh, product management and business development based here in the US on the East Coast. Uh, and, Rob? Yeah, I am Rob Rasnick. So I am the director of sales worldwide. I am based in St. Louis, Missouri, and I've been with Sin2 for about a year and a half. Excellent. Uh, so first feature I'd like to highlight uh, in this uh, demo is that, uh, of course, we can already uh, display 2D drawings, but now we have kind of uh, enhanced the, the, the user experience when having 2D drawings. I'll show you that. So. Uh, what you can do today is you can already uh, uh, get 2D DWGs in Sintu Cloud, but the way it works is that you have to uh, include it into, uh, let's say, a Navisworks file first. Okay, so uh, you just open Navisworks, you uh, append your project with a 2D DWG, and that will create automatically a NWD file. And in order to get this NWD file, you have to go through BIM 360. So what we have improved here today is uh, uh, some transparencies, uh, uh, say parameters over uh, the 3D X-ray mode. I'll show you that on how we use also this uh, 2D plan or 2D DWG in the navigation map. What is coming as well uh, that you can expect that in, in the next few months is that you will be able to upload 2D DWG directly to Sintu Cloud uh, from the disk not going through Navisworks on BIM 360. So you can expect that in the next few months. So let me uh, switch to a first demo here. I'm doing live demos today. So uh, this first demo, for this first demo, I will use uh, this uh, project that was uh, the courtesy of uh, our friends at TruePoint Laser Scanning. 
thank you again for that. Uh, so you see in this project, I've got, of course, 100 scans, but of course, I've got also a, a 3D model. Uh, this is an Avisworks file. And also I've got a 2D drawing. Again, as you will see, it's an NWC file. Again, it was imported via BIM 360 and via Navisworks. So if I view this one in the 3D space, uh, this is a typical 2D drawing. Uh, so you can see here, so this is a, the 2D drawing. But let me show you uh, all this data at the same time in the 3D view. Okay, so you have, uh, you know that you have the possibility uh, using the work zone tool uh, to display uh, those various data or to get rid of that. So uh, let me toggle off the 3D model and keep only the 2D drawing on the scans. Now, if I take a top view of that, I go to the orthographic view. Okay, this is what we have done uh, with this new version is that now you have a full transparency uh, of the 2D, uh, 2D uh, drawing with the scanned data. And I don't know if you have noticed as well, but when I, you see the navigation map on, on the bottom right, okay, we are also using the 2D drawing to navigate the scans, okay? And so you, uh, if you don't have a 2D drawing, what we do in the navigation map, we will stream the scanned data and take a top view of it uh, and filter the data on this is what you will have to navigate your scan. Now you can also navigate your scan from uh, the 2D uh, drawing. So, okay, so uh, for example, uh, selecting other scans like that. So what you can do now, since you have this uh, transparency level set between the scanned data on the X-ray vision mode and uh, on the scan, if you look for details, like, okay, see if your uh, uh, CAD file or your 2D plan aligns correctly to your uh, scan data. Okay, so you can check for very accurate information as, as here. Uh, now also, if you want to, uh, you can also go, of course, uh, in this uh, scan view. Okay, go, let's say, go back to the surface mode. Okay, so here I have a, I have a scan here, but I've also got my 2D model. Um, for example, here I can use a comparison tool, select my scans, select my models. In this case, will be uh, the 2D drawing only. And then if I use a visual check tool, you can see that I can check the, the uh, correct alignment between the scan data, the as build conditions here and the 2D drawing. Okay, pretty cool. And of course, if you want to, to make a measurement, uh, you can go to the measurement tool. Take a measurement, make a measurement. Okay, and it looks like this drawing is off by about uh, nine, inch, nine inches, okay? Now you can always add the 3D model as well. Okay, so this is uh, the, the 3D model. Now going back to the transparency settings, so this is the 3D data, and this is the scan information. You have got also the same kind of, you see the, uh, the slight misalignment between the two as well. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show uh, to you today. First, that uh, you can uh, have this X-ray vision mode over the 2D drawing, and you will use a 2D drawing to navigate the scans, which makes uh, navigation much easier. All right, so let me continue this set of demos. So that was uh, feature number one. Uh, the next one is a, a completely new feature that has been requested to us many times. Uh, how can I add a 2D plan coming from a, a JPEG or PNG uh, as a sitemap, okay, as a background image? Okay, here I'm not talking about a DWG, I'm talking about really a JPEG that could be a uh, uh, it could be a Google Earth view, it could be a, a, a Google Maps view or, or a, a PDF that you scan and then you turn it into a picture. Okay, so the way it works, uh, this new tool, uh, you will be able to, uh, it's a work zone related. So you will be able to upload a sitemap or a background image in each work zone you want. Okay, so uh, you may have a different picture in, the, in each work zone. Then you upload a JPEG or a PNG 
uh, uh, in this work zone. I'll show you the, the process and we will add PDF a little later. Uh, we have this new tool that will align the background image to the scans. And then we use this information both in the overview map, so in 2D view, and also in the navigation map. But I'll also show you what we want to do in the 3D navigation map, 3D view as well. So let me switch to the next demo here. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll start by uh, this project. This is a, a test project called a Pier 9. This is the Autodesk. Uh, PR9 offices in San Francisco. Uh, let me remove those guys for the moment. So the first thing you want to do here, uh, I first grab, uh, I first grab a picture uh, in uh, Google uh, Google Maps of this area. Okay, I just capture a screenshot. Now what I want to do is uh, I go to the, uh, I first upload this picture. So I upload this as a document. Okay, I go and select my file. This is uh, this one. So this will upload my PNG. And now I go to the overview map. On the, in the overview map, I see the scan data. This is an orthographic top view of it. I will use this new tool called sitemap. So if I click on this one, the first thing I will do is select the picture that I have in this work zone. Or oh, here it's at the root of the project, but it could be in any work zone. I have a transparency slider to see the picture or the scans. Okay. Uh, and then with the, the way it works is that you will select two scans that you will match to the picture. Okay. So let me select the first scan. I say, okay, let me select this first scan in the driveway. And there I click on match. On, you see the scans disappear and I can select the point on the picture where this scan should be located. Okay, so this is the first match. Now I will select a second scan. Let me take this one on the driveway again and I will match it to this location where it should be the real world. Okay, and here I've got the first alignment as simple as that. And if you feel that this is not very well aligned, you could do a better job. You just click on match again, and you just adjust your match, okay, like this. You can do this multiple times until you feel that the alignment is good enough for what you want to do. Again, this is used to navigate your scan. So we are not looking at sub-millimeter alignment here. And once you have done a good job aligning, you save the setting. Don't forget to save, okay? And this is saved now. So if I refresh my page, okay, I go back to the same exact view. Now I will have this sitemap aligned to my scans, as you can see, okay? Of course, you can change to X-ray vision mode. Of course, our X-ray vision mode will create white over black, white lines over black. So sometimes the contrast is not very good, particularly if you upload a, a, a scan of a 2D plan. So we're, we will be working on that. We know the, this is uh, this is something we need to work on. Okay, let me go back to the X-ray vision to the RGB mode. Now, if I go into the 3D view, okay, now I'm using this sitemap to navigate my scan. So if I look at on the bottom right here. Okay, you see that the way to navigate my scans will be using this sitemap. So I can click on this scan, position, move to the next one, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a much e providing a much easier way to navigate your scans. Okay, let me show you that on another example quickly. Uh, I will use this, uh, the famous Oakland train station. Uh, for which I could find uh, like a 2D drawing on, on the internet. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, oh, by the way, when you do this alignment of your sitemap to the pic, to the scans, what you, what you do create is a new file called, called map, okay, that will appear in your data tab. So let me get rid of this one first. Okay, let me remove this and I will do the whole process again. So here's first thing I will do is uh, upload this, uh, this plan that I found on the internet, okay? 
go to the overview map, select the sitemap tool, select the picture here. Okay, so you see this is a kind of picture I found. Okay. And now what I will do, select the first scan. So let me take this one and then I match it to my picture. I know this scan should be here somewhere. Okay, then select a second scan uh, that I take this one on the roof here and I match it to my roof here. I know it should be around here. Okay, and then I save the settings. And this is what I have the, as, as an alignment. So if I go to the 3D view now, all the same, I will be able to navigate my scans using this 2D drawing. Okay, you see, I can see all my scans now in my over my 2D, so I can navigate my scans much easier, much easier way. Etc. Etc. Okay. So this is uh, this feature will should be live tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday or later. So we're talking really about uh, the next few days. Okay. Now we're going to improve this a little even more. Okay. In order, let me show you how it will look like. So today you have this uh, background image over your uh, below. Sorry, behind your scans in the overview map but we're also adding it to the 3D view. So let me show you how it will look like when we do this. Uh, this is what it will look like. So here I'm in the 3D view now. Okay, this is a prototype version of it. So now you see that you can also display your background image uh, over your scan in the 3D view on eventually, uh, let me get rid of the BIM model. You see, okay, uh, check your uh, scan data here. Uh, let me switch to uh, surface mode on uh, maybe some uh, back face curling here to see the inside. Okay, so then you can uh, navigate, sorry, back face curling here. Then you can navigate your scans this way on, over your background image as well. And we will provide, of course, the possibility to toggle on off your background image in the work zone tab, work zone tool, okay? Uh, so this, this, uh, this uh, additional, uh, say a uh, complementary feature to the sitemap will be added uh, in the next few weeks. Okay, and uh, this is it for this one. So let me come back to the, to the agenda. Uh, next one is, uh, is something we did uh, before AU uh, a few months ago, a few weeks ago is how we can push issues to Autodesk BIM 360. So you know that one of the key features of Cinto Cloud is that you can, uh, uh, of course, upload uh, uh, BIM models on CAD data over your scans and use uh, this uh, comparison tool to detect issues, okay? Or, or eventually only use your scan data to find those issues. And then you can, you can document those issues. So already we can export those issues in the BCF file being collaboration format. On this BCF file, you can import them uh, into uh, Navisworks or Revit on other software like that, uh, based on various plugins that are provided by uh, Beam Collab or Beam Track and others. Okay, so uh, this is already existing for a few months. What we did last year was this cloud to cloud interoperability with BeamTrack, and this is really working well. So, with this cloud to cloud connection, uh, uh, you can push and sync issues between Cinto Cloud and BeamTrack. Okay, and you have the choice to push only from Cinto Cloud to BeamTrack or to sync. That means every modification in BeamTrack will be reported back into Cinto Cloud. So what we have added uh, lately is a possibility to uh, also push issues uh, to BIM uh, 360. Okay, and this is a demo that uh, Rob will be making. It's a recorded demo, but you will see how it works. And what we're working on as we speak is also pushing those issues to Procore, and we will come back to this one. Let me show you first how we do push those issues to BIM 360. Thanks, Dominique. So now I'm going to go into my projects and I'm going to select on this Sintu TruePoint data project. 
the first thing I'm going to do is just create an issue. So I'm going to go to my 3D views, give us a second for the model to load. And I'm going to go into an area where you've probably seen this before, but uh, I have some issues that I want to, to create. So I'm going to go to this location, the scan location, and I'm going to go to my surface mode. And what I'm going to do is use my visual analysis tool. So I'm going to go down here to my comparison tool. I want to compare all scans to all models. And I'm going to turn on my heat map. And I'm going to set a tolerance of, let's just do like a tenth of a foot. So as you'll see, uh, everything outside of this tolerance is in red. And if I want to check this, I can go to my visual check tool. And here I will see my scan data versus my model data to the right. So uh, what we're seeing here is this door is missing. So I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to go ahead and create an issue here. So let's go to my annotation tool, and I'm going to add an annotation. I'm going to select it on this door, and I'm going to create this as an issue. And I'm going to give it a title of please fix this door in the model. And I'm going to give it a severity level of high. I'm going to give it a due date of the 29th. And I'm going to please add to Revit model. And I'm going to go ahead and create this annotation. So now that we've created this annotation, which is just number 21, I can go up into my reports tab. And I'm going to see that this is the issue that I just created. Uh, from here, I can go to my integrations tab and I want to link my send to project to my project in BIM 360. So to do that, I select that integration for BIM 360. It's then going to connect to BIM 360 and it's going to ask me what project do I want to select it to. So I'm going to choose my TruePoint demo project. I'm going to submit this. So now it's confirming that it has connected over. And what you'll see is, is we have these uh, Autodesk icons here, and they're grayed out right now. So if I want to select some to add to, as an issue to BIM 360, I simply go click on uh, the issue, and you'll notice that it will start to blink. So when it's blinking, what that means, it's, it's establishing that connection to BIM 360. Uh, once it has stopped blinking, that means that the issue has been pushed over. So it's still blinking and it should stop here in just a second. And now you'll see that it's solid. So this means that this issue has been pushed over to BIM 360. So we've created a shortcut up here where we can just go connect to that BIM 360 project. And it'll take us right to the issues tab. And then here you can see here is the issue that I just pushed over. So if I select on it, uh, it gives me some information when it's due, uh, who the owner of it is. But what's really nice about this is it has a direct link back to Sentu. So if I click on this issue link down here below underneath the description, it will open up a new instance of Sentu, assuming that that person has the rights and permissions to use uh, Sentu in this context. And it takes me right to that exact issue. And so from here, I could edit it and make additional comments, whatever I'd like to do. So, um, like I said, pretty useful tool. And from here, I'll turn it over back to Dominique. Uh, in fact, if you could tell us more about what's coming with Procore, Rob, as well. Yeah, so uh, we've had a lot of customer requests that are wanting to allow Sentu to connect to Procore. And what we're looking to do is add an integration similar to what we have with BIM 360 or BIM Track. And what we will do is actually push the issue that we find in Sentu to Procore as an observation. Uh, the reason behind this is, is uh, we're really allowing the end user to decide, okay, I'm gonna make the decision, is this something that we're going to address in the field? Or is this something that we need to address with the model? So do we need to make changes to our model? So we're letting the end user make that decision inside of Procore. And from there, they kind of follow their, their typical issue tracking system of choice, whether that be BIM 360 or uh, BIM track, uh, whatever it may be. So it's just really allowing once a project is under construction, how do we get it out to the field and allow those project managers to make the decision? Do we change this 
do we change this uh, observation, you know, like I said, out in the field or actually in the model, make changes to the model, which everyone then will have access to and, and move forward. So that's what we're looking to do with Procore. Uh, Timeframe, we're looking probably at the end of February to have a, a beta, beta version of this available. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Uh, next topic on the agenda is uh, how you can embed into cloud share views in iframes. This has been a long request from many users. So the way it works is really simple. We made it hopefully very simple. You just create a shared view uh, URL in your project. Uh, on, there is a demo of that just coming after this. Uh, and then you add it in an iframe on your site exactly as it is uh, listed here. That's as simple as that. Uh, but there are two, uh, two notes here. This will be valid only for shared views, shared viewer URLs, okay? Now, if you take, for example, uh, uh, if you take the URL of, uh, of a work zone in, in, your, in your navigator uh, and you try to embed that one, this will not work, okay? So you have to generate this URL through our shared viewer uh, 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 options. And this is the one you can embed into an iframe. Uh, something also we just got from a customer is that uh, if, you know, uh, when you do create those uh, shared view URL, you have various options. One of them is to require the user to be a member of this work, this project or work zone. If you toggle this one on, of course, uh, you would need to be connected to Cinto Cloud already before viewing the content. If you are not already connected, and if you have this option being toggled on, you will. Uh, we, are, we are just now adding the possibility to open a login password page inside the iframe. So this is something we will be working on in the next few days or few weeks, sorry. Uh, but today, if this option has been toggled on, you will need to be connected first to Cinto Cloud to view the content. With that, let me show you our Rob, which tell us how we use this uh, feature to embed uh, a shared view in the project home by Autodesk. So as we were discussing, uh, we do support iframe technology using our shared viewer. Uh, to give you an example of that, here's a little known feature that would probably be very useful if you use BIM 360, but I'm in my project and I'm going to go to my project home. Inside of here, we've built a custom partner card. So if I go to customize and go to my card library, and I'm going to scroll down here to uh, send to, select that, and add this card. I'm then going to drag and drop this up here at the top so I can give most of my viewers the ability to access it. So we have this configure piece here. And in order to configure it, what we need to do is go back into our project. I can go zoom into an area and let's say I want to go to this location here and I want to uh, view this as surface and RGB, but I want to create a shared view from here. So in order to do that, I go up and click our shared viewer. And from here we can say, do I need to be a member of the project or the work zone? I can password protect it. I can set an expiration date and I can select what I want to share as well as put in my company logo. But from here, I'm just gonna keep it simple and generate a sharing URL. I'm going to copy this information and I'm gonna go back into uh, BIM 360 Project Home and select on configure. I'm going to paste that URL in there and hit save. Oh, I guess I need to move it back up here again. Uh, and hit save. So it has been saved. So what's nice about this is anybody uh, that has access to Project Home in your project can now go look around at your scan data. Um, you can look at the different views. I can move around from position to position. I can, like I said, I can change my views to RGB or if I want to look at the panoramic or if I want to look at just the surface. So a bunch of different ways I can incorporate my scan data with my uh, BIM 360 project. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you. And once again, that does share the iframe technology. All right, so thank you, Rob, again. Uh, next feature I want to highlight, this is something which is due to, uh, uh, for release 
uh, hopefully tomorrow, uh, so tomorrow Friday. Uh, this is a new project explorer. What it will do for you? It's a new way. Uh, it's a new. It's a new uh, project explorer that has that is resizable, much faster. We are using another library to do that, and you can expand or collapse folders. So let me show you what how it works. Uh, go to this uh, project here. Uh, I can use uh, which one should I use? Maybe. This P9 again, or another one. P9. Okay, yeah, this one. Uh, so here I created a, a fake uh, work zone structure just to show you this new capability. Uh, uh, again, so the first thing you will notice is that uh, you can resize it. So here, for example, I created a very long work zone name so that uh, eventually you see the interest of having that. Uh, until now, you could not resize it. So if you had a long names, you would not see the end of it. And unless you put your uh, mouse over it, of course, but now you can resize it pretty easily. Uh, and also I created those fake uh, work zone uh, structure. Now I can expand all or collapse all easily. You see, uh, and also you can uh, remove it, put it back pretty easily, okay? What you will notice as well is that access to the data here, all those icons, all those scan information will be much, much faster, almost instantaneous if you have a, a small number of scans, but very, very, very fast if you have thousands of scans in your work zones, okay? So uh, this one is due for release in the next uh, few hours, okay? So hopefully you like it. Let us know how it works for you. What will be adding more to it uh, is coming the next few weeks as well, is the possibility with this new Project Explorer to select the work zones to be displayed. And this is really cool because it will may, it may change the way you organize your data. For example, uh, you may have multiple work zones with, I don't know, uh, 100 scans each or multiple uh, scans in each. So you will first select a work zone that will be displayed in the 3D view. And then you say, okay, I want to have my 2D drawing or my 3D model uh, over it, okay, or on top of it. Then you'd select another work zone that contains this model, okay? Uh, so that will avoid the duplication of those models in all the work zones where they are necessary. So, uh, all the same, if you need to uh, see work zone number one that has 100 scans with work zone number 10 that has another 200 scans, you just select which work zones you want to display in the 3D view. So uh, this is coming, uh, hopefully uh, pretty fast, but uh, give us a few weeks and you will be able to use this one as well. Uh, on a different topic, I wanted to highlight this because this is really key as well. You know, uh, uh, cyber, cyber security is a key concern, uh, not only since the pandemic, but also for, uh, you know, big companies moving their data to the cloud is always a big concern. So what we, uh, uh, what we have done uh, is that now we are SOC 2 uh, type 1 certified. And this is really a key milestone for the company. That means that everything we do being uh, on the development side of it, on the publishing side of it, uh, is completely under control and we have the most secure uh, ways of, of doing this. So uh, on now, this has been certified by a company in New York City. And now we are moving to the SOC 2 Type 2 certification, which is really the ultimate goal. And this should be achieved in the next four, five, six months. Okay. Uh, please be aware, of, of course, that we only use SOC 2 Type 2 partners. Okay like Amazon, of course, Microsoft, SunGrid, Stripe, and a few others. So all our partners connected to SyntoCloud are all SOC 2 type 2. And what we do as well, to, uh, we do regular penetration testing. So uh, we outsource the, the hacking uh, somehow of the platform to uh, uh, experts, to external auditors. Uh, the company was sele we selected was Sysdream in Paris. And uh, the last penetration testing uh, was uh, run in November 2020. So if your IT departments uh, are willing to know more about the cybersecurity of the platform, we can certainly give you access to those uh, SOC 2 type 1 reports 
uh, the penetration testing reports and all of this, it will require uh, NDA to be signed first, but uh, feel free to ask. Uh, we are really open on all those aspects. Uh, something you may want to consider as well, because this is something we do uh, quite often now, is a customized branding, as we did for our customer Stentech here. Uh, if you want, um, this has a small fee attached to it, of course. Uh, uh, it's, you can have your own uh, subspecific subdomain, uh, like in this case, stuntech.c2.com. Uh, you can, we will adapt or we will change the UI look and feel to match your logo and your logo colors. Uh, also, all the emails being sent by the platform will be branded with your logo all the same with reports. It's not, it's not a new product. It's not a white label product because still, of course, the SIN2 uh, terms of services, uh, uh, data processing agreement or, uh, you know, privacy policies apply, uh, but still you may have uh, the need to, uh, to, to, to promote your company through, uh, through SIN2 Cloud uh, this way. Please ask us if you're interested. Uh, and that's it for the new features. So again, uh, some of them are, have been already uh, released. Uh, some uh, like the push issue to, three, to BIM 360, some will be released in the next few hours. Some of them will be released in the next few days. So uh, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, let me uh, go over a few other stuff that we're working on that, that, is, that are coming in the next few, uh, few, few, few weeks then. Uh, the first thing I want to highlight is uh, that we are going to, we're going to support the indoor mobile LiDAR data, particularly the data provided by the devices like the Navis VLX or M6 or the Leica VLK to go. And the way it works is that <clears throat> uh, those devices uh, using a SLAM technology will provide a unstructured point cloud. Okay, eventually with the camera pass on the panoramic images that were created during the capture process. What we will do, we will use this data to restructure this unstructured point cloud by creating uh, voltage points that are either along the camera pass, that will be version one, uh, or anywhere else. If we don't have the camera pass, we will have an automatic way of placing those virtual voltage points. Okay. Uh, so let me show you an example of that with some Navis data, but in parallel to that, what we have been adding to the platform as well is the support of 360 images, uh, like those spherical images captured by uh, devices like the Ricoh device or other stuff like that. What we do upload is uh, registered images. We don't do the registration inside Cito Cloud, so you must give us your list of spherical images together with the location and orientation, okay? Uh, again, if you use a Navis device or a Leica device, blk to go those, uh, this information is given by uh, the, the result of the uh, SLAM process. So uh, it should be in your file folder and you just need to access those files uh, to import that to Cinto Cloud. But let me show you how it works on what it looked like inside Cinto Cloud now. For this one, I will use uh, the Navis data that we got of their street. This one. So here, um, we uh, did this work on what we did in this case. Let me go to this one. Uh, the Navis street. Let me switch directly to the street view. So you will note, let me go to the X-ray vision to have a better view of the project first. Uh, you will notice that you will clearly see the camera pass here. On what we did the, in this uh, restructuring process, we decided to turn uh, each uh, one panoramic image every five into a 3D scan. Okay, we could have gone for all the scan position, all the panoramic image position, but we decided to go for one over five. And this will be a user setting when you do the import. So if I go to one of the scan position like that. <clears throat> okay, so this is a source picture that was uh, shot by the device, but now it's also a 3D model. So I can go to the surface mode. Okay, and then you will see how 
the quality of the data you get from this Navis device. Okay, moving to the next vantage point. Uh, now, if I move to one of the pa panoramic image, it's only a 2D picture in this case. It's just a panoramic image, no 3D was computed for this one. Again, this could have been the case, but we selected to go for one 3D scan every five panoramic image. Uh, and again, this is 3D data. You see, it's pretty cool, uh, really uh, impressive uh, quality data. And uh, yeah, this is something that we're adding to the platform as we speak. Uh, and uh, will be available in February, at least in a beta version of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is a support of VLX uh, data or uh, say unstructured point cloud. I don't have a, a VLK uh, to go data here, but that will be the same. Uh, now let's continue uh, the presentation. Yes, talking about those three, uh, those uh, 360 pictures, uh, this is something we already released in a beta version in the platform. So you can already upload uh, 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 your spherical images to the, to the platform uh, together with a, a CSV file that will contain your spherical images, the XYZ location and the orientation. And today, the orientation is in quaternions, which is a mathematical model to define those orientations. We did it because this is the kind of data that is produced by the registration software like the Navis or, or, or the BLK, uh, the uh, Leica Cyclone uh, software, okay? Now we're making it a little simpler for the next version uh, that should be available in the next few weeks. Uh, you can upload your list of spherical images together with the XYZ location on a simple heading. So uh, the angle from the north uh, coming from your compass, uh, that will be another uh, much easier way to, to import your data. Of course, the XYZ location for your spherical images must be in the same coordinate system than the scans uh, that you will have in the, in the, uh, in the project already. Uh, another project that you may be interested in, and uh, this is something we've been working for months now, uh, is uh, we are developing our mass streaming API as we speak. And now we are very close to having a, a very first version of it. So what it does, uh, you know, we have this very cool way of uh, streaming those high resolution meshes from your scan data in our, in our web viewer. So with the Sintu API, you will be able to stream the same quality mesh in other apps, uh, being a web apps or desktop apps, okay? And the first uh, usage of that is to be able to stream those high resolution mesh-based scans into Unreal and Unity so that you can enrich those uh, scans in, with uh, interactive application, uh, uh, complex CAD models to create rich scan on BIM experiences or rich scan on CAD experiences. Of course, those game engines are very well known to support many, many different file formats. Uh, then you have all the uh, capability to make it an immersive experience supporting all kinds of devices, uh, all, all kinds of projection systems. Uh, and so if you want to, cr to create like a, a, a training scenario or a simulation scenario with uh, the, uh, as built information as a background, this is a way to go. So let me show you how it works. So you would, from, from the Unreal plugin that we have been developing, uh, connecting with the API, you will be able to log into uh, Sintu Cloud, uh, select your project, and uh, you will be able to navigate in Unreal, going from scan to scan, or uh, later in the 3D, full 3D view as well, uh, by streaming the resolution, the high resolution meshes for every camera position that you have. So let, let me show you that in, in, uh, in a real in a real demo. So I will go to, uh, so let me go to my desktop here. I will click on this Unreal plugin. The first thing it will do, it will ask me if I can access the data. Okay, yes, I am willing to access my data. So let me now, so this is my Unreal plugin. It's a very rough plugin, a uh, very rough user, uh, UI for the moment, but we're gonna improve that. We have this small guy waiting. 
here. So let me select this project first. And by selecting this project, I will see, you see at the bottom left here all the all the scans that have been uh, uh, now uh, ac that I can access. I can cling on one scan. So what's happening now? We are streaming very fast. Uh, not only the, the the scan data, but also the CAD model because this project has got a, a CAD model as well. Okay. So now I have the exact same user experience in my Unreal platform that I have in the Scene 2 web view. Isn't it cool? And I can also switch uh, to a surface mode. So you see the quality mesh we have here. Let me switch to another vantage point. Like this one will be uh, or this one. There's still a few bugs, but anyway. Uh, tuck. Let me load another scan like this one. Okay, so you will see how fast we load the mesh-based data. It's uh, uh, aligned to the to the CAD model or the BIM model. I can. So if you want to see the BIM model, this is a BIM model, and this is a BIM model with the scan data. And then you can imagine that uh, someone in your team will then uh, create I don't know a, a simulation scenario to see how a new uh, installation can be done in this uh, in this building. Okay, so uh, if you're interested, let us know. We are looking for uh, partners or customers that are willing to go deeper into this uh, kind of uh, project, and we can give you access to the Sintu API now, and uh, eventually the plugin as well. And uh, let us know if you're interested. Uh, or let me show you another example that has color before. Going to the end of it, let me go to this one, the famous Oakland train station again. Maybe to this scan, okay. This is a small guy working, waiting to be animated uh, and of course this has an RGB as well. Okay, uh, that's it for this one. Let me go back to the, basically that will be the end of the presentation. Now, uh, willing, if you have some uh, questions, happy to answer that together with Rob and Simon on the call as well. Yeah, Dominique, I got some questions here. Um... So one of them is around the site map. So uh, the question is, how can we use georeference ortho photos as a site map? Because they have accurate ortho photos available with the site coordinates as a JPEG, a PNG, or a GeoTIFF. Uh, today we will use them, of course, but only as a simple JPEGs or PNGs. Okay. Uh, we put a first limit to it, which is 4K by 4K, but we're going to extend that pretty shortly. Uh, but we will not use a geolocation, a geolocation information. You still have to match it manually to the scans. At least with this first version of it. Okay. Uh, the next one I think I can answer. So uh, thanks for the BIM 360 issue. Uh, how does it look in BIM 360? So what I showed is, is really what you get <coughs> inside of BIM 360. Uh, we're working with Autodesk. The, the thing with Autodesk is in their issues inside of BIM 360, it must be attached to a model. And the way that we collect issues and, and a lot of our partners like BIM Track and others and Procore is that they actually allow you to bring over the 3D viewpoint. So the 3D location as well as the area that you're looking at. Uh, BIM 360 doesn't currently support that, but we have been speaking to the Autodesk team to see if there's a way that we can attach it to the model and, and be able to view that in the 3D world. Uh, also need to keep in mind that BIM 360 does not uh, have the capability to stream mesh data. So we're, we're still looking at ways of how we can improve that process and, and we'll definitely be moving forward with some, some feature enhancements in that sense. Uh, let's see another one here. So question for you, Dominique, uh, can you share views in the 3D view? So like when a user goes to the URL, uh, it'll take them back to that same viewpoint in the 3D view. 
Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. The, the shared view will, will open a new window. Right. Uh, it has a different, slightly simpler, simpler user interface. Yeah, I, uh, I think the question is, is they're looking, is there a way to do that? Instead of being at a scan location, could you actually just be out in the 3D view, not at an actual? Uh, okay, okay, okay. No, this is a great question. So uh, we, 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 are, we are going to work, we were working on that. Uh, uh, today, no, uh, by default, you will need, uh, it will always go to a scan location. <clears throat> either, either the one that you selected when you created the shared view, or uh, the closest scan if you uh, didn't select one uh, when you created the shared view. Uh, so we are working on that in order to be able to get a 3D view as a starting viewpoint as well, okay? Uh, because this has been a request from many users. So uh, when you create a shared view, you will be able to select, uh, you, will, you, you will use a viewpoint you have currently in your 3D view. Okay, okay. so they were adding this. Uh, I don't have an ETA for this one, but I hope it's coming pretty soon. Okay. Uh, another one is, uh, so we've got integrations with uh, BIM Track and BIM 360 and soon to come Procore. Another request is, when will we be able to push issues into Revisto? Oh, you can already e export BCF files and re-import them in Revisto. This is already working. People use it already. So. Uh, having a more direct uh, connection is, a, yeah, this is a good question. Uh, we need to put that in the roadmap. If there is a big request for it, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. and to add to that, we have spoken with Revisto team and yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're all on the same page. It's really about development time. Exactly. Um, so one last one here, and it's around the site map again. Uh, the question is, is it possible to turn on the site map drawing and turn off the point clouds, but still show the bubbles of the scan position. This is a feature we're adding as well. Sorry to keep promising stuff, <laughs> but this is a, uh, the reality of the roadmap uh, is that we will have a, a adding a layer tool uh, into both the overview map and the 3D view that will give you this exact possibility. So being able to toggle on off everything like site map, 2D plans, 3D models, uh, scan icons, 3D, mesh, uh, et cetera, okay? Then you will be able to do exactly that. So if you want to see the site map with the scan icons only, or including the icons for your 360 pictures, yes, you will be able to do that, okay? So adding this layer tool is something we have the roadmap for Q1. So hopefully you will be able to demonstrate that pretty shortly, but uh, yeah, this is coming, not today, not today. Okay, and I got one last one here. Uh, and this is a future wish list item, but it's around uh, the comparison heat map that we pr produce. Uh, the question is they would like to export that heat map colorization as an RCS uh, or an RCP that they could then bring into their CAD modeling environment. Is there any mm -hmm. plans on the roadmap to add that type of functionality? Uh, no, I don't have the answer to this one. I need to discuss with the team on the... Uh on Leonardo, our CTO, too, about this one. But uh, I'm really interested in uh, having more details about this workflow. Uh, yeah, Robert, uh, so this one's for you. I would say uh, send an email to either myself or Simon or, or uh, Dominique. We can have a follow-up call on that. Yes, absolutely. I think that is all we have, uh, and it's good timing. Uh, actually, we have another, another thumbs up on the... Uh, on wanting to export that that heat map as color as a colorized RCS. Um, but anyway, we'd like to thank you for your time today. We got about five minutes left, but we're going to go ahead and drop off. As it looks like all the questions have pretty well been answered here. Uh, if you have any other questions or you know information, or if you want to discuss with us, please feel free to send an email to sales at send2.com, or you can also hit us at contact at send2.com. Once again, thanks for your time today and everybody be safe and, and healthy out there. I know it's a crazy world, but we'll all get through it. So wishing you all the best and thanks again. Thank you. Bye.